The broadcast of the regular meeting of the Transportation and Public Works Committee will now begin. Good afternoon. Um, this is the regularly scheduled Transportation Public Works Committee. Uh, this day, May 5th, 2021. Uh, I'm Councilman Reich, I chair the committee. I will note uh, for the record that this meeting uh, has remote participation uh, by members of the city staff as authorized under Minnesota statute section 13D.021 due to the declared local public health emergency. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city's website and YouTube channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota Open Meeting Law. Um, I would like the clerk to call the roll to verify a quorum. Councilmember Gordon. Here. Fletcher. Here. Johnson. Here. Palmasano. Present. Bender. Here. Chair Reich. Here. There are six members present. We have a quorum and we'll proceed with today's agenda. We have 15 items listed, uh, which include a public hearing, the remainder consent. I'll note it'll actually be 14 as we'll move to delete one item as explained in a moment. Um, going through the consent item, uh, which any committee member can pull for deliberation uh, as they wish. Item two is the authorizing a contract amendment with the Minnesota Department of Transportation for the Bryn Mawr Hedge Landscaping Project. Items three through five are all authorizing contract amendments with the following companies for Alley Snow Plowing Services. Six is the authorizing a contract amendment with Blue Sky Electric Company for the Vinland and Riverfront Lighting Retrofit Project. Seven is the authorizing a contract amendment with Vite and Company Incorporated for the Hoyer Heights Street Reconstruction Project. Eight is authorizing a license agreement with the Met Council for a secure bicycle facility in Ramp B. Nine is setting a public hearing for June 9th, 2021 in this committee to consider the sale of a portion of right away adjacent to 2015 Washington Avenue North to MIC Limited et al. 10 is authorizing an amendment to the Transportation Action Plan's All Ages and Abilities Network to add an existing low stress bikeway on 3rd Avenue Northeast from Main Street Northeast to Central Avenue Northeast. 11 is approving an amendment to the street lighting plan to reclassify the 42nd Street East, Downtown East, Grand Avenue South paving project street segments as pedestrian street light corridors. 12 is approving the city of Minneapolis's comments to the manual on uniform traffic control devices for streets and highways and directing the submittal of the comments of the Federal Highway Administration. 13 is deleting from the agenda, the bid of Egan Company for the Fridley Campus Electrical Rehabilitation Construction Project. And this is due to the fact that the vendor has withdrawn their bid from this item. 14 is accepting the low bid of Aggregate Industries for class one rip wrap. And 15 is accepting the low bid of Landbridge Ecological Incorporated for stormwater facilities, specialty vegetation management. Um, I will move the striking of the item as mentioned and move all items to proceed to full council consideration. Is there any discussion on that motion? Uh, Andrew, Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And this wasn't a comment on the consent item, so I can wait until the end of the meeting if that's okay, or I can speak now. So uh, your choice, I'll defer to the chair on that. Well, we've got you on the mic, so go for it. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. So not related to the uh, consent item, but I thought this moment was really important uh, to mention and recognize. So every month we as council members, uh, along with a lot of other city employees get this too, but we get the transportation maintenance and repair division monthly newsletter. I thought this was particularly notable uh, that a number of our public works uh, employees, uh, public works family members, uh, decided to opt for the early retirement incentives. And if I'm doing my math correctly uh, on this, between all of them, there are 835 years worth of experience 
uh, at the city of Minneapolis in public service. And that is so outstanding and so commendable between all these individuals and all that they have given uh, to the people of Minneapolis over their time uh, with the city. And so I just wanna quick read their names um, and just extend uh, appreciation to them. So from the bridge crew, there's John File, Kevin Doty, Jim Van Hall, John Miller, Jack Hall, and Nick Petra, Petrangelo, uh, Vicki Stitch, Mike Ryan, Tyrone Crawford, Wally Schodal, and Rick Jorgensen, Mike Barth, Jeff Skochinski, Kevin Lindbergh, Jeff Jackson, Saul Sanchez, Randy Holmes, Ward Jeffers, Mark Clark, Mary Jo Rains, Tom Woodrich, Dale Hanstead, and Scott Krishuk, Ted Norgan, Jackie Lewis, and Hao Tran. Again, very impressive service to the people of Minneapolis and so appreciative of all their work on behalf of the city and wishing them all the best in retirement. Thank you so much to all of you. Well, thank you for that, Councilmember Johnson. Um, very appropriate and um, yeah, it's an amazing amount of service that is accumulated as you so described. Um, and one other way to look at it on the other side of the coin, an amazing opportunity for developing the workforce of the future for the city of Minneapolis. I see council member Fletcher in queue. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just didn't want to let item number 10 uh, pass uncommented on. It's kind of a big deal. This has been a nagging issue where there's been this uh, bicycle path that uh, was kind of built by private initiative in a way that predated uh, a lot of our other bicycle network. And so then the question of who owns and maintains it over time uh, has, has become a bit of a sticking point and this action uh, to formally amend our transportation action plan to include this in the all ages and abilities network uh, gives us a framework for resolving those questions, for starting to include it in future funding for that network, uh, for starting to include it in our uh, city planning. And so this is uh, uh, the city stepping up and resolving uh, what, what has been a bit of a tricky issue that community has been asking us to solve. It is a, it is a bike path that is both highly valued and uh, in need of some attention. And, and this uh, starts to open the door for us to do that. So I wanna thank city staff for working through this and getting us to this resolution. Thank you for highlighting that. Um, yeah, I think it was a very significant amount of work and kudos to you and, and yes, staff, of course, as you've mentioned. And I know a lot of times the, you know, the larger projects, the big stretches of trails will uh, get a lot of attention and ribbon cuttings, but oftentimes it's these curious uh, connection points or the absence of connection points that need to be made and or figured out that really, really are a big service to our overall network. So uh, kudos to, to that good work. Um, anyone else have something to mention? Council President Bender. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Sorry, I was just getting organized with my various windows and buttons. Um, I just have a quick question on item 13 for staff, which is related to the bid for Fredley Campus Electrical Rehabilitation Construction Project. And um, I, don't, I, I, I don't think this will put staff on the spot. It is a sincere question, just based on the conversations we've been having lately about our, um, you know, the siting of our public works facilities. I. I just wanted to clarify and just maybe invite staff to just give a teeny bit of information in the public um, that this this project is very specific to the water treatment facility uh, is my understanding from the materials and my understanding of the project. But I just wondered if you could just clarify that, just give a very brief um, summary of this bid and, and just let us know if it, if it has any bearing on. Um, so if, for example, the council decided to put the water yard up at the Fridley site with this be affected in any way. I will defer to um, Director Jelly to either answer or find the person to do so. Thank you, Chair Reich and Council President Bender. I will do my best. Uh, so the uh, went put this out for bid um, and we had an apparent little bidder and uh, we heard kind of this week from the apparent little bidder that this was more about uh, 
the supplies needed for an electrical project like this, um, the market uh, costs are increasing for those supplies and they didn't feel comfortable that their bid was going to be something that they could deliver on. Um, it was not fair to their subcontractors. So really, really about kind of commodity prices um, and, uh, and focused on that area kind of independent of any other facilities issues. Um, and the project itself is specifically focused on the water plant. Uh, yes, sorry, uh, Chair Wright, Council President Bender. This is uh, about the water treatment facility and needed uh, electrical upgrades. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Uh, maybe I will just follow up with some specifics. I, I, I'm just curious, you know, is it all internal to the site or are there, is there sort of like ground level systems? And, and again, just to that question about um, if we were to locate the water yard at this location, it, does that affect this project at all? Uh, Chair Reich, Council President Bender, I can answer that. It, it doesn't affect the locating of a of the of a distribution facility there. It's think of uh, the water treatment plant as a very old house uh, that needs uh, upgraded electrical systems in the house. And there wouldn't be any efficiencies. This is, a, I mean, you know, for public works, this isn't a lot of money, but it's a decent enough sized contract that um, I guess I was just curious if if the overall site is going to serve a different and additional use if there is a need to think about the this project. But I'll, I'll follow up. I don't need to keep asking the same question over and over. Thank you. Super well, um, good inquiry, and and I will note not only is it a very old home, but a very beautiful vintage home um, that needs a lot of TLC, including electrical work. Um, and yeah, and it's not just one or two buildings; it's a complete large-scale campus adjacent to the river. Um, so, so yeah, uh, a complex complex for sure. Um, all right, we have generated a lot of conversation. Paul Masano. Aye. Bender. Aye. Chair Reich. Aye. There are six ayes. Those items move forward, minus the one that was struck. Um, and we now will go to item one, our public hearing, and I'll yield the floor to our director, Jelly. Thank you, Chair Reich. Committee members, uh, item one is the Washburn Alley construction. Uh, between Washburn Avenue South, Vincent Avenue South, 58th Street West and 59th Street West. It's the project approval and assessment public hearing and Nathan Kemmer, an engineer with transportation engineering and design will introduce the item. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Nathan Kemmer. I'm a project engineer with the transportation engineering and design division of public works. Uh, today I'm here presenting for the public hearing for the Washburn Unpaved Alley City Project Number 2332. Uh, the proposed project consists of constructing the unpaved alley between West 58th Street, West 59th Street, Washburn Ave, and Vincent Ave. Uh, elements to be included as part of the proposed project includes full removal of the existing alleyway, new pavement, and utility improvements. The total project cost is $297,740.82. The total alleyway assessment is $27,740.82. This is based on 2021 uniform assessments, assessment rates, which are assessed based on the total land area of the benefited parcels abutting the improved alley. Uh, the, uniform is, the uniform rate is 29 cents per square foot and is the same for residential and non-residential properties. These assessments are payable over a 10-year period. Uh, the rest of the city funding sources are net debt bonds, City staff has conducted numerous outreach activities throughout the planning and design of the project. A virtual pre-assessment meeting to provide an overview of the project, discuss plan improvements and answers. Any questions related to the assessment method and process was held on April 26th with zero people attending. Today, Public Works is asking City Council to pass resolutions ordering the work to proceed, adopting the special assessments and authorizing sale of the assessment bonds. That concludes my presentation and I'll stand by for any questions. 
Are there any questions for the staff per the presentation given? Not seeing any, uh, I will then open the public hearing. Uh, I noticed that we have no one registered. Um, and if there's anyone listening, you can press star six, unmute and state your name and address for the record. No one's online, um, not seen any indication for commentary. I will close the public hearing, move the item and ask the committee if there's any discussion. Council Member Palmasano. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this project is in my ward and I have um, handled questions and concerns from neighbors in this space um, on and off over the last seven years. I just wanted to share that um, people see this obviously as, a, as an improvement, as a benefit in their space. Um, I think a lot of people that don't live on unpaved alleys or places where we have sidewalk gaps around our city are are generally unaware of them, that they still exist in our city. So I think it's just really important to to keep funding this, to keep making progress until we have closed all of these gaps and can provide, you know, pay these kinds of services for um, for as long as we still have projects. So um, thank you, and I just wanted to offer to move this item forward. I appreciate everybody's work and especially staff in, in reaching out to um, to residents around here. Thanks. Well, thank you for those comments and highlighting that um, that ongoing work, and it still is ongoing. And and I agree. Um, gravel, um, tar and gravel, unpaved, uh, no modern sewer and gutter management so last century, so I'm glad this work continues. Um, with that, um, we have any more discussion? Seeing none, item is moved. Uh, clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Bender. Aye. Chair Reich. Aye. There are six ayes. That carries and we'll proceed to full council. Um, we have now uh, completed all of the items. And if there's no objection, uh, we will be adjourned. And thank you everyone for participating. <laughs>